and welcome back to my channel. So, we're going to be doing another reading vlog. I've done reading vlogs before, but I've never done reading vlogs on just a specific book. And that's what I'm going to try to do for this reading vlog. So this is a book that's pretty popular in the romance genre right now. And I've been curious about it because of how mysterious it is. And that one is Flock by Kate Stewart. So every time I've heard about this book, whenever it's been recommended, no one says what it's about. And that just leaves me so curious as to what this book is about. All I know about it is that it is a romance. And I did look up a few subgenres that it's in. It is also a reverse harem, which I'm a little nervous about because I'm not that into reverse harems, but you know, maybe this will be a good one. I don't know. And it's also categorized as a dark romance. So that's all I know about it. Other than that, I have no idea what this is about because no one will say what it's about. It's the secrecy of this book that is keeping me intrigued and wanting to know what it's about. So I feel like I have to read it. And because I'm going into this book so blindly, I thought it would be fun to vlog my experience with this one because I literally know nothing about it. So that's why I'm making this video and hopefully it'll be a good one and I'll have things to say and all that but we'll just see what happens. I forgot to give a warning that spoilers for this book will be mentioned. Please do not watch the video if you have not read the book and do not want to be spoiled. I'm going to start it right now and I will probably keep updating as much as I can. I feel like this is going to be a more of a reaction than an actual vlog so I'm pretty sure I'll be updating my thoughts on this a lot. So I'm going to start this and I'll be back in a bit. with so much information in it that I'm just like my brain is scrambled. <laughs> I'm like what is going on? Basically I think the gist of it is that she left this town or her home and fled from it and now she's coming back for whatever reason and she was involved with this guy who kind of I don't know I think ruined her or it was like a very traumatic experience being with him but she's going back to him I think and that's where it's at it sounds just very what's the word melodramatic <laughs> it sounds dramatic so now she's going back for whatever reason and she was also engaged she just broke off her engagement to go back to the sky i think oh my god i don't know what's happening <laughs> so that was the prologue um yeah that was it so now we're getting into the actual stuff so let's continue okay so in the first chapter we're going back in time her friend says this is our last summer before college starts so she like just graduated high school and she's at this house I think she's staying I'm assuming this is her friend it hasn't been stated yet but she's staying with her and yeah so we're going back in time from the prologue and we just went into pretty much her whole family life backstory so she's been living with her mom and her dad has been pretty absent like he's always paid for her child support but has never really been there for her at all and now she's living in the town where he lives in because he owns I think it said like two company he owns a company that is like located in two areas one being the town that she is in right now and she's supposed to inherit his fortune so she's living in this town to learn his business and she wants to use the money to help her mom because her mom has never been in a great place so that's her reasons why she's in this town but she's not happy to be spending time with her dad which is like understandable because her dad doesn't sound that great so girl you're totally valid in that that's a tough situation I'm starting to see the burden the main character is having which her name is C right her name is C now we know her name her friend tells her this isn't on you it was her job to raise you that's the obligation of a parent which you should never feel obligated to repay and because 
she's taking on learning the business so she can inherit her father's fortune. She's trying to gain that fortune to help her mom out because her mom is apparently in debt and she just wants to give her an easy life. But um, her friend is like, you shouldn't be doing that. And that's so true. It's really sad when the child feels like they have to be the parent for their parent and it happens. But she shouldn't have to deal with it at 18 years old. That's not right. So I'm feeling for her. But I can already tell she kind of has a kind heart from what it seems like because she wants to provide for her mother. Like, very admirable of her. Also, she's living with her dad. I thought she was living with her friend. <laughs> That's what it made it seem like. So I got confused, but she's at her dad's, like, mansion because he's super rich. So sounds lovely. So she's at the orientation for her dad's company to start working there. And she introduces herself to the group and what she says, oh my god. She says, I'm just going to clear the air now and let you know my father owns this place, but I want no special treatment. And I promise not to narc if you take an extra cigarette break or like your afternoon delight in the janitor's closet. Can you even imagine saying that to this group that people you don't even know? Like, that, that gives the idea of what this girl is about. She pretty much has no filter, I guess. <laughs> okay? And then the next guy to introduce himself. He says, No relation to the man upstairs, and this is my second time working for Horner Tech. I left briefly, and I would very much enjoy some afternoon delight in the janitor's closet. Okay. So he's going to take on her challenge, I guess. And then after this guy, Sean, introduces himself, she's like checking him out. So I don't know if Sean is going to be playing a big part in this book, but... They're giving emphasis on him, so we'll see. <laughs> the first the first line of the next chapter. Hey, afternoon delight, an amused chuckle sounds up behind me as I make my way through the parking lot. Someone is actually calling her afternoon delight. I think it's the Sean guy. Yes, it is. Girl, you caught his attention. I don't know if it's in the best way, though. Oh my god, he's super tall. Oh my. We love the tall ones. He's so tall. It sounds like he's handsome as well. She's just going on and on about his looks. Okay, I see where this is going. I don't know why with every adult romance books I've been reading lately, all the guys have tattoos. Why do they always have tattoos? Why? I mean, there's nothing wrong with tattoos, but it's like every single love interest, male love interest in the books I've been reading all have tattoos. I, I don't know. I mean, tattoos are cool, but every single book has them. Let's get some diversity. Let's just get a guy with no tattoos. Can we ask for that, please? I just finished the third chapter, and basically all that happened in it is Sean took her to a party at his house, and she got to meet two of the guys that he lives with and she warned her that they are very rough and that they will bite and I'm like I don't think that's a good thing to say to someone you just met who you're taking to your house that would scare me off and one of the guys there that I assume I think he lives there I think he's the one who's one of Sean's roommates but anyway he kicked her out because she is the daughter of the boss of this company and he said that half of the people at that party work there and the party is like super rowdy so he kicked her out and he just came across as so aggressive. So that's it. So we're getting to know a little bit more of the other characters so far and that's where we're at. I'm going to stop right now because I'm super hungry so I need to make lunch <laughs> but afterwards I will get back into this. Um, it's going good so far just a lot of information happening but I like what it's setting up to be so I still am like in the dark of what's actually is the plot of this and that's kind of fun I like the mystery about it so this has been a fun one to go into blindly but yeah I'm sure we'll get into what it's actually about soon I'm just and I'm just gonna keep reading to find out so I'll be back in a little bit so I moved to sitting outside and it is super cold it is so cold it is never this cold here 
but I freaking love it. I love chilly weather. I'm like, if I'm gonna sit outside, this is the weather that I want to sit outside in. But man, it is cold. I have a blanket on. I have my sweatshirt. I'm not wearing shorts anymore. So yeah, it is pretty chilly. And I have coffee, so that helps a little bit. But man, it's like the air stings it's so cold well anyway i'm also reading at the same time of course so i read through chapter four and right now um sean is at uh, cecilia's house well her dad's house they're in the pool and the whole chapter she's basically just ogling him how good he looks that was it that was it that was it <laughs> but i mean you know what girl i feel ya I feel you. If you're at a pool and a guy with that great of a body is just standing bare chested before you, go for it and check him out. We'd love to see it. And right now they're still at the pool, so we'll see what else happens. So that's all. Not a lot of exciting stuff yet, except for checking out the guy. It's a romance book. You gotta expect it. You can tell how cold it is out here because I have my hoodie up and I look so, I look so weird. <laughs> but I'm keeping it off because it's chilly my ears are cold so i read two chapters since i last was on screen and we're getting some information so in chapter five john's tattoos was mentioned cecilia pointed them out and it turns out that him and the two other guys he lives with have the same type of tattoos like they have i think it's ravens tattooed on them on their like chest and shoulder and it's like the same type like the same position same tattoos and it was funny because cecilia was like is it like a friendship tattoo thing <laughs> like friendship bracelets they got matching tattoos <laughs> she was like making fun of him sounds super cute but he says they're not and i'm wondering what that's about i guess they just got them just because is this like some kind of cult thing i don't know <laughs> that's my thoughts going on right now so i'm sure that'll be brought up again and in chapter six she's talking with uh one of her co-workers at the at her father's company and she's telling her how um, she should stay away from these guys because they are you know super into partying and they go through girls and let's see I highlighted it it says it says she tells her right here they don't mess around fast cars parties drugs and girls and she also adds I hear they share women I feel like that's foreshadowing because of the fact, I kind of, now I kind of wish I wouldn't have looked up the subgenres for this book. But because of the fact I know this is a reverse harem, I'm wondering if the guys are just going to start sharing Cecilia. That's what it looks like it's gearing up to be. And she's going to get involved with them. And yeah, so she's warning her about all the bad things they do. And she also tells her that someone she knows, it, she says it's her goddaughter got involved with one of the guys and she drastically changed afterwards she was never the same again and she says that the boys ruined her she says that those boys pretty as they are i think might have the devil inside of them so yeah um i kind of like where this is going <laughs> it's like these guys what is it about them like what do they do to ruin this girl that cecilia's co-worker is mentioning we just know that they're probably going to ruin Cecilia because we know that from the prologue and what she explained about them. So yeah, I can see where this is kind of going. I'm a little nervous, but intrigued. So I'll go ahead and keep on reading. Um, probably should not stay out here for much longer because it's really cold, but I'll try to withstand it. <laughs> so see you later. I'm back inside now, back. In the warmth. I could only sit out there for so long, but it felt so nice. I'm now up to chapter 10. Cecilia has met up with these guys again, and she started taking drugs, which I think she mentioned she's never done before. Like, she took weed and did not, it did not go well for her. She got pretty high straight away, which, like, of course, because you never tried it before. So one of the guys ended up driving her home because she was too high to drive by herself. And now she's been checking out Dominic, which is one of the guys in this group, and is taking an interest in him. So yeah, this is setting up to be a reverse harem. <laughs> um, we'll see how I think about it. Because I have a hard time getting into those, because it's, um, not the traditional way 
a love story unfolds so we'll see how it goes i love the fact that she's constantly checking out these guys and is so unashamed of it i love that she just owns it like girl is horny as all hell but she is so just fine with it like she unrepentantly tells us what she's thinking of these guys and i'm i respect her for it <laughs> as silly as it is so i'm gonna continue i'm just gonna try to go through this as much as i can i'm gonna try to just read half of it in one sitting that's a lot just that's a lot that's a lot to read in one sitting i don't know but i'm gonna try because i don't know i just want to keep on going through this one so in the chapter i'm at right now cecilia and sean are going on a hike he's like showing her around the area they're in the mountains and cecilia is worried about having dinner later with her dad and she's like I have to go because I have to go um, have dinner with my dad later she's like I shouldn't be out and so Sean is telling her not to be worried about what's happening later and focusing on the now and I really like what he says um, in regards to being in the moment rather than worrying about what's going to happen later he tells her sorry I'm just saying why waste now time worrying about later she goes now time and he goes, it's the only measure of time that matters. Time itself is just an invisible line, a measure people made up, right? You know that. And while it's good for reference, it's also a major stress trigger because you're letting it control you. I actually love that because I'm also someone who just is always preoccupied with worries about my time being limited and worrying about how much time left i have to get things done but he's right like time is just a concept really like it is good for reference but don't let it control you just focus on the present and good message sean just suddenly became very enlightening and i like that and he also says now is now later will eventually be now don't be a slave to the insanity of keeping time and keeping up now is the only thing you have control over and even so it's an illusion i love that you can only control what's happening right now you can't control what's going to happen later so focus on the present i like that I i'm liking him i've been liking him since the beginning although that may change because these guys are supposed to be dangerous for whatever reason so i'm nervous i'm like sean don't pull a fast one on me don't change and be evil but you never know i mean i still have yet to figure out why this book is so notable because obviously something happens this dude oh my gosh i can't believe he just did this so to prove his point that time shouldn't matter he takes her apple watch because she has an apple watch throws it on the ground and smashes it with his foot i'm not even kidding i would be so pissed if i was her i would be like there was no reason for you to prove your point by smashing my apple watch I would have gotten his point, but he did. I guess that's a way to get her to stop worrying about time, but that stuff is expensive. I can't believe that. Oh my gosh. He is insane. And this dude has continued enlightening us because he just went into this tangent about social media and how it spreads in misinformation and he's totally right he's like i'm so against social media because of that i respect that because he's right i have a martini i think it's the perfect reading drink right i don't know i think wine is more of a reading drink but martinis will do i mean it's super good anywho i read through chapter 12 and it was an eventful one. So after Sean and Cecilia went hiking, they did a picnic behind a waterfall. He put it on for her because it's her birthday or her birthday's coming up. So it was a little way for them to celebrate. And it was so, there was a lot going on. So they finally got down to doing some dirty stuff, which I say finally because this whole time, Cecilia's been wanting it. But Sean has been like, not giving it to her and she's been inwardly begging for it but not telling him the reason i don't know why this just happened what i get for gesturing the reason he's been not giving it to her not giving in is because he wanted her to make the first move and i'm just like i would be so pissed if i was her <laughs> it's like this whole time she he wanted her to make the first move and she was a little mad because how could she have known that? 
so oh my gosh but they yeah they finally went down and did stuff and yeah so that's where I'm at right now it's like at last they're giving into their feelings I feel like it's mostly just attraction but at the end of this chapter she says I could see myself falling for Sean Alfred Sean Roberts because that's his full name and today a small part of me does and I don't know if that's going to hold true because Sean is being very confusing because she's been told that these boys are dangerous but everything Sean's been doing has been disproving that because he's shown not to be that bad of a guy but is he hiding something I feel like he's hiding something I feel like all these guys are hiding something not telling her something and she's going to find out and be devastated there's something going on with them it's like what could it be what could it be could, are they murderers are they some kind of criminals that's my guess that's my guess so we'll see so we'll just have to see i still don't really know what's going on and it's keeping me reading so that's good therefore i'm going to continue first of all sorry for the noise out there but i can't really help that but <laughs> anyway i have read a few more chapters of this i actually didn't update for a really long time i was just going through it not wanting to stop reading so we're gonna update right now so all that's happened so far there's been a lot of like spice that's pretty much it there's been a lot of that but some conversation between that so in this last chapter they were at a bar just you know hanging out and dancing and some conversation comes up they're both telling each other about their parents and cecilia goes in to the fact that her mom used to be very a lot more active before she started to change, like she used to be more full of life and stuff. And she tells Sean, it's like she forgot who she was and just gave up. I feel like this is foreshadowing. And that is because I have this feeling that she was involved with maybe this group of guys' ancestors, if they were the same as these guys were. Because we knew from her coworker, she told her that this girl she knew got involved with these guys and she's never been the same afterward. And Cecilia is saying how her mom changed at some point and was never the same as she was from years ago. I'm like, was she involved with these guys' ancestors? Because obviously she couldn't have been involved with the boys because they would have still been boys at this time. So were this group of guys' parents the same as they were if they got into some dark stuff and all involved themselves with one girl? Was that girl her mom? I don't know. I, I, that might be a stretch, but Cecilia's mom and her past keeps being brought up, so I can't help but feel like that's important and that's going to play into something later. I feel like it's foreshadowing in that way. So we'll see if I'm right. Also, Sean is very adamant on Cecilia not using her phone around him, and I don't know if that's just because he's kind of like a think-out-of-the-box person and he doesn't like play by societal things because that seems to be a character trait in him. I don't know if he's just telling her not to use her phone because he just believes on being more of a free spirit and not confined to, like he says, time, technology and all that, or if there's another reason for it. Like why does he really not want her to use her phone? I don't know. Is there a reason for that? See, this book is just bringing up questions in me. Like why are these specific things being brought up they have to mean something i'm thinking none of the conversations just happen for no reason so i'm very fascinated by this it's like there's so many possibilities that could happen on why these points are being brought out so right now she's staying at sean's place where you know he lives with two or three other guys i can't i don't even know if it's two or three because there's always a fourth guy mentioned i don't know but <laughs> she's at his house and she gets up to go to the bathroom and when she comes out she looks across the hall where Dominic's door is open, he's sleeping there, and he's sleeping naked, and she just stops and stares, and just goes over in her thoughts how attractive he looks. This girl is with another guy, and she's just watching this guy, this man naked on his bed sleeping, like a little creep, and just thinking about how hot he looks. I guess I kind of get it. She says that it didn't mean nothing. He's an attractive man. How can I not look away? And I'm like, I guess I get that. It makes a little sense. But at the same time, you're, you're basically with Sean now. Like they've been seeing each other exclusively for a while now. And she's just looking at another man like that. And the interesting thing is that Dominic has always been so cold towards her. That's his thing. For some reason, he does not like her 
at all and that's yet to be further explored why that is but he ends up waking up notices her staring at him and gives her a look that isn't so cold she describes that his look was something else entirely so something opposite from how he usually looks at her with such distaste so I don't know what that's about so that was an interesting scene Dominic hasn't been brought up in a while, but we have been getting clues that Cecilia is into him. She's very attracted to him. So I don't know if that's further going to be explored. But like I said, reverse harem. That's what this book apparently is, so it might happen. <laughs> but yeah, that was a interesting scene. In this last scene, Dominic comes over to Cecilia and starts kind of flirting with her <laughs> and mentioning how she saw him naked and in that scene he like makes he makes her touch him emphasis on makes her and then he tells sean that she touched him and she's like no i didn't i was forced into it which she was so that was a little uncomfortable and so sean now knows that she intentionally stared at dominic while he was naked and he's just cool with it which makes sense if this is gearing up to be reverse harem. I mean, it makes sense totally, but it's just like, okay, he's just cool with it. He just says to her, yeah, he's attractive. You can look. It's a little weird. It's a little, a little strange. <laughs> but, I mean, I guess that's good he's not mad. And Dominic knows about Sean and Cecilia's time behind the waterfall a few scenes ago. And apparently Sean didn't tell him that he took her to the waterfall Dominic just knows how does he know that was he there that's the only reason I can think he knows about that occurrence was he there was he watching them and if so why I'm flabbergasted I don't know how does he know that that's gonna drive me crazy it's a little creepy how does he know that I can only think he was there so that's drawing me for a loop I don't know what is up with that but it's a little disturbing I feel some underlying darkness behind that I don't know how he knows that <laughs> doesn't defend her at all. He tells her, you can stand on your own, and she's just not having it. She wants help. And then what follows is him just being uncharacteristically kind of cruel. And it's a different side of him than we've seen. And I've been curious to see if we were going to see the side of him that was not the nice guy we've been seeing. But I can't tell if he's just teasing. He comes across in a very teasing manner in this scene so I don't know if he's just playing around and it's kind of worrying Cecilia too she was like I don't remember him ever being this way I don't know girl I've been having a feeling he's gonna have a switch because characters have said that he's not a great guy like he seems and we might be finally getting into that he says in the next chapter if a man seems too good to be true he usually is a liar that can happen. I feel like that's what's happening with Sean. She's starting to realize it. I don't know, but maybe he'll rope her back in, probably. You can tell how much this girl is a hopeless romantic, and I, I really resonate with that a lot. She says in this paragraph, I expect passionate butterflies and one or two fairy tale moments. When we fight, I want it to hurt. When we the F word. I want to feel it with every fiber of my being. When a man confesses his love to me, I expect him to mean it. I don't want to question the word's authenticity. I want to be claimed and owned and ruled and possessed by love. I love that for her. Although I don't think she's going to find that with Sean. I think this guy is just going to ruin her. And she's mentioned in her past relationships, they all have been pretty toxic. And I'm worried that it's going to be the case with Sean. It's gearing up to be. So, my girl, you're not heading in the right direction if you want those things. But maybe Sean will prove me wrong, but so far he's proven to be kind of dark. And I don't like where he's going. This whole time, Cecilia's father has been so aggravating. So they're having dinner and 
Cecilia is going over with him the fact that he never was there for her at all, never tried to love her when she was a child, and he says he's making up for it by giving her the chance to have his fortune. Like, dude, that's not a way for making up for it. What she needs is not money from you. She needs your love. That's what she needs. And he thinks that just giving her his fortune will make up for him neglecting her and that's not how it works so her dad is frustrating he's just very cold-hearted and I do feel bad for her that she never had her father in her life because that's what she wants and she's been mentioning that she had hoped to rebuild a relationship with him but it's just not happening so I feel for him her dad is delusional if he thinks that giving her his fortune will redeem him for neglecting her because that's not how it works. That's not what a parent should do. So Dominic is a tech guy. He's That's like something he's majoring in and he is constantly working on computers. And Cecilia says here, when I asked Sean what Dominic was working on, he quickly changed the subject and so I dropped it. No closer to finding a piece of the puzzle. That is Dominic King. Interesting. That's very interesting. What is he working on? So we have the reason why Dominic knows that Sean took Cecilia behind the waterfall. It's because Sean has taken girls there before. So I think he just assumed, or at least that's what's being presented here. Dominic just assumed that he took Cecilia there as well. Um, so I guess it's a reoccurring thing that he takes girls to that waterfall, which if I was Cecilia, that wouldn't make me feel too good. It also gives us the little taste that Sean was involved with other girls, which I guess we kind of knew that all along, but what happened to these girls? See, more questions coming up. That's one thing I like about this book. Everything that is being stated is, it has to be happening for a reason, and it's bringing up question after question. That's what keeps you reading when you have a lot of questions coming up. So what happened with these other girls that he took to the waterfall? I want to know. So I'm finally taking a little break. I've been reading since 12 non-stop. Well, I had a lunch break, but <laughs> between that, but I feel like I've been reading for so long. I'm now halfway through this book. So yeah, I've been reading a lot today, which I'm proud of myself. Really am, but I need to take a dinner break now, so I'm going to do that. Exciting news though. So you know how I said I posted on Instagram a picture of the book while I was outside so the author Kate Stewart commented on it and I I flipped that's so cool that very rarely happens to me <laughs> but I'm like oh my god and when I saw her comment I was like oh my gosh I love when authors comment on like readers posts of their books I know that happens and it's happened to me a few times but it happened this time and oh my gosh that's so so awesome and in my post in the caption I said I'm reading outside right now and it is cold I haven't felt this chill in a long time and I freaking love it and so her comment said happy reading the boys will keep you warm they are keeping me warm because I'm loving these characters so I thought that was so sweet awesome so yeah thank you um Kate I don't know if you're watching this probably not but thank you so much for your comment that was so cool it made my day and I'll let you know where I'm at right now so I read up to chapter 22 and in recent chapters it came to light that Cecilia's father is paying his employees short like shortening them on their paychecks and so one of the employees got really mad about it and took it out on Cecilia because she's Roman's the head of the company's daughter and it's really wrong because she has no say in what the policies of the company are or the scandals going on in it so that's a little messed up but yes it's come to light that Roman is not paying his employees what they're supposed to be owed so I'm curious as to why that's being brought up does it have something to do with the boys because there has to be a purpose behind why he's shortening them on their paychecks so I'm wondering if there's more to this than we are seeing I wonder if Roman Cecilia's father is more involved in this plot than we know Again with the questions, so many questions with this book. Every single chapter, 
there's a new question being brought up that's making you want to know what is up with this? Why is this being brought up? That's what makes a good book, folks. You, you put in a question every single chapter, you will get your readers to keep reading. It's making me want to read this book the whole night. Like, I don't want to go to bed until I finish this book because I'm so curious and I need to know the answers to what is going on. Gosh, I might just have to stay up and read this. I don't know, I have to work tomorrow, so that might not be a good idea. So that's why right after I get done eating, I'm getting straight back into this because I want to read as much of it as I can tonight and possibly try to finish it tonight. That would be such an accomplishment if I finished it tonight because I never finish a book in one day. So it'll be a stretch, but we'll see. I'm finding the moment that we're on right now funny, and I'm not sure if it's supposed to be funny, but it kind of is. So Sean and Cecilia were in the car together, and this song comes on. And the song is about a hookup, like the person singing the song is just talking about how his relationship with someone was just for hookup reasons. And so Sean is singing along to this song, and Cecilia gets pissed because she feels like he's hinting that all he sees her as is some hookup. <laughs> I don't know why that's kind of funny because maybe it's because she might be reading too much into it like it's just a song and he's just singing to his song and that's it I think. I don't think he's hinting at that he only sees you as some hookup. <laughs> at least I don't think so unless I'm wrong and he is hinting at that but I mean he's just singing to his song <laughs> so She's getting really, really dramatic, and it's kind of hilarious. That's the first thing she thought of. But okay. Um, you might be overreacting, though. Cecilia just threw this at Sean. I heard you share. He says we have. He just admitted that the rumor is true that they have shared girls before. Mm -hmm. They actually admitted it. it. makes it more real. So, I wonder if they are going to start sharing Cecilia because she's shown an interest. And Dominic, as has been stated and has been proven, it might happen. This is just further getting crazy. So Sean went on to tell her that he's completely fine with her doing things with Dominic. And he actually admitted that he actually gets off on that. And I feel so weird about that. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense because... He didn't admit that they used to share girls, that that's something they do. So that really doesn't come as a surprise, but it's just like, wow, all right. It's, it's so interesting because this guy has just shown himself to be so normal in some ways, and then he throws this, and it just, that's not normal. <laughs> it's not. So we now know that. He's fine with sharing. Alright. But he also told Cecilia that it's her choice to make if she wants to do things with Dominic. If she doesn't, then that's also fine. So, he's leaving up to her, but she got pretty excited at the idea. She did. She reacted to it with excitement, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so, that's crazy. Um pretty crazy so now I'm wondering if now that she has permission from Sean to pursue Dominic if she's going to I have a feeling she's going to because she's shared how attracted she is to him that's probably what's going to happen so yeah this is getting crazier it's getting crazy gotta say in the last clip I said I wonder how soon Cecilia is going to do things with Dominic. Not even two pages later, she already did, but both of them went down on her at the same time. That's where we're going. I don't know why that surprises me. Like, going into this book, I knew nothing of what it was about, so nothing should surprise me, but my god. Wow, okay. That just happened. <laughs> so now that's where we're going with this so now she's involved with both of them we'll see how I start feeling about that like I said reverse harems are hard for me to get into because I like focusing on the main character with one love interest because when they start getting involved 
with someone else it makes it harder for me to care about their relationship because I find romantic relationships to be so unique to a character so when they're having it with two different people it kind of makes the other relationship not as special to me you know so I don't know how I'm gonna start feeling about this but I'm not gonna make judgments until the book is over so this yeah I'll just have to start getting used to it but that scene my god there's a lot happening right there there was a lot that was a lot of steam <laughs> I'm gonna say that and I just need to expect that nothing is going to surprise me I'm mind blown if you couldn't tell okay this situation she's now in with having both Sean and Dominic is getting very interesting because as been stated before she lets us know that she is a romantic and when she thinks of romance she thinks of having the one special person just one to spend the rest of her life with so now that she has two guys that she's growing interest in it's messing her up because that's not what she planned for herself and I really like that I like the fact that since the beginning she's been stated to be like the hopeless romantic type who thinks of finding just one person but she's thrown in this mix where she has two guys and she doesn't mind having a relationship with both of them I find that very very fascinating I like that we're exploring that and it makes me wonder how she's going to handle having two guys if that's something she's going to be okay with long term I don't know but she also stated that she might just have Sean be like her one special person and just have Dominic on the side which I can see happening I think no matter what the one she's going to choose is Sean because that's the person she was falling for first so um, this is getting very very interesting I can see how her thinking might be swayed if she becomes okay with having both of them that might just happen this chapter I just read which is chapter 28 was eventful I feel like at this point now things that I have suspected that are going to happen are happening I feel like now is where just the crazy dark stuff is coming up and yet we still do not have answers to what exactly is going on and it's a bit frustrating <laughs> um, it's so confusing but I think that's how it's supposed to be so there's this party this party going on and Sean and Dominic take Cecilia to this party <laughs> and all the guys there have the same raven tattoo so now it's not only Sean Dominic and the few other guys that we know of in the group which I think is like Tyler and I think Russell has one as well he's shown very sparingly but I know Tyler also I think he does have one as well but now all these guys which is like over 20 guys have this tattoo which has to mean something and at this party Cecilia encounters this girl and Cecilia keeps trying to ask her what exactly is this and she keeps answering it's a party every single time she's like no it's a party <laughs> and every single character is telling her this is a party which it's clearly not there's something more going on here and she confronts Sean asks him what is this and he tells her it's just a party but he does kind of admit that there's something more to it but he will not tell her what exactly is going on and it's leaving her frustrated it's leaving me frustrated and this is her reasoning for not telling her which is both interesting and kind of infuriating so Sean asks her about secrets he asks her can you think of secrets that you'll take to your grave that you've never confided in anyone ever and she says I have a few and then he says and how do you go about doing that she says by never talking about it or thinking about it acting like it never happened and he says exactly I can't give you specifics on a history that doesn't exist I can't give you rules and details or dates about things that never happened so his reasoning is that with secrets the way you keep the secret is just pretending that it never happened and so he's just pretending that nothing's happening here that's his reasoning for not telling her I'm like dude really yeah I guess that makes sense just pretend it didn't happen that's how you keep a secret but it's driving her insane it's driving me insane not knowing what's going on so yeah me and Cecilia we're both super frustrated right now 
I don't know if we're gonna get to the bottom of what exactly is happening here because the scene following, Sean just got chased down by the cops. <laughs> they eventually lost the cops. And everyone at this party is criminals in some sense. I don't know exactly what reason they're criminals. I don't know why it doesn't say. I, this is crazy. This is absolutely insane. Um, I've heard from a lot of people that after reading this book, even when they finished it, they still were confused. And I am sure that the rest of the books go further into what exactly is going on, but if I have no answers by the end of this book, I'm going to be kind of pissed. And from what I heard, that's the way it is. So, I don't know, y'all. This is crazy. I'll just keep reading see what happens and <laughs> see if we get somewhat of some answers but right now I'm just in the dark and I don't like it so this part was really cute so it turns out Dominic is a reader he has a whole collection of books and he's just reading while in bed with Cecilia and I don't know why that's so cute. It's like, who would have known? He's actually into reading. And what makes it even cuter is that he has a whole romance section. And he got all those books just for Cecilia. Because he picked up on the fact that she likes romance books. And I thought that was really cute. Like, he knew the genre she liked. And got some books for her. That was awesome. So they have, like, a reading date together. They're just lying on the bed reading for hours. Which sounds like a really great date idea. I guess somewhat cute because in that same scene, he like pleasures her while she's reading and he makes her read while he's doing it. It's a little weird. A little weird, but I mean, all right. So that escalated. So I think I got an answer to a, qu a big question I've been having. So... The criminal aspect why they are seen as criminals is because they take money from large corporations and banks that siphon funds from unsuspecting shareholders and employees. So they're taking money from corporations, I take it, and Dominic is the one who organizes like where they take the money. And they use this money to give to, it looks like, smaller businesses who are struggling and they help them out with that and it's been stated they do crimes for good deeds and so I think that is where this comes into play so yeah their morals are skewed it's like they're helping people but doing bad things in order to do it so that's interesting <laughs> um, I don't know how to feel about it so that's somewhat of what this club does I don't know if they have anything else going on beyond that but at least we have some answer right there okay so recent things that have happened something kind of big happened so i really feel like this group has something against technology i think that's been hinted at for a while now i think it started when sean told cecilia not to use her phone around him and in this chapter, it was in chapter 24, Sean goes on this rant that our phones and laptops and all that spy on what we're saying. And I know that's like a very common conspiracy theory in like real world. So I understand that. But he just goes on this whole tangent about it. And Cecilia kind of tells him that he's kind of crazy. And he just flips on her and says, we're breaking up. I'm done with this we're over and that gets her really upset so much so that she confesses to him that she loves him to get him to stay and he gives in and stays with her but that whole scene was crazy i really feel like they are against technology for whatever reason i feel like they're trying to overthrow the government Something like that. They're trying to start, like, some revolt against the government in some way. I'm sorry, I just got distracted. The neighbors upstairs are being so loud, and it's, like, 1.30 at night. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, what was I saying about the government? <laughs> I really feel like they're trying to start a revolution against the government. I think there's been hints at that. And the fact that Sean is so adamant that our tech devices 
are being used to monitor what we're saying it just all comes together so we'll see if I'm right I think this just goes beyond doing good deeds and stealing money to give back to the poor and doing this whole Robin Hood thing <laughs> I think it goes beyond that and they're trying to take control that's what this whole club is for it makes sense to me at least so I am 80% into this book like I said I wanted to finish this tonight but I'm getting tired so I think I'm going to stop, unfortunately. I will definitely finish this tomorrow, though. Since I'm 80% in, I'll definitely finish it tomorrow. And I'll update on my thoughts of what I think of it tomorrow. And so I will see you then. Hey, it is the next day. I have sat down and read more of this. I am now 80, but not 85, 87% of the way in. So I'm doing good. And right now, Cecilia and Dominic are together. Dominic took her out on a formal date, which she was really excited for, so that was really cool of him. In this scene, Dominic is going on about how he doesn't have a plan for his future, doesn't think about it. He also expresses that he just feels very low about himself, and this has Cecilia questioning that because she's been thinking he's so great. But he tells her something along the lines of she doesn't really know him. I feel like there's a lot more to that. Like, I feel like he's hinting at some darkness inside him that we don't know about. So I don't know what he's hiding there. But I'm suspicious. So I wonder if something's going to happen with him. I wonder if there's something about him that's going to be revealed. I don't know. But I feel like I'm getting somewhere. Okay, this last part was crazy. Crazy? Like the last paragraphs after my last update so much happened all at once something is happening to where they're trying to get Cecilia out of there like Sean is driving her home we have no idea what's happening but something urgent is happening at this moment and as Sean is frantically driving her away from the house he tells her somebody couldn't keep a secret that's a scary line right there what does that line mean who couldn't keep the secret What's going to happen to this person who couldn't keep the secret? What is the secret? What the freak is the secret? This whole book, I've just been confused to no end. And the confusion just does not stop here, y'all. I don't know when things are going to really start making sense. What the, these guys' true motives are. Confusion is the word, the one word to describe this book, for sure. I don't know what to think. This last chapter, which is chapter 37, I had to go back and reread some of it because I was so confused. So Cecilia walks up to the house where the guys are at and they're all gathered together having a little party. And these two songs are playing. One is Afternoon Delight and the other is called, which I know, Afternoon Delight. It's a pretty weird song <laughs> and one, another one's called Cecilia which is her name those songs are playing and she comes to the conclusion that they have been using her just from those songs playing because she feels like those songs were playing to humiliate her because they're both about her because Cecilia that's her name and Afternoon Delight is a reference to the speech she made on her first day of her job when she was introducing herself so if she got from that that these guys are like I don't know not into her anymore like she feels like they've been playing her because of that she gets really really upset and then leaves um the guys are kind of ignoring her I guess from I'm so sorry the tv out there is so loud I wish there was a way for me to help that um I guess from those the songs playing she's just like hey these guys have been messing around with me and she just leaves a mess and is super upset and feels like these guys betrayed her but i'm like you got that from songs playing i don't know it just seems so far-fetched i'm a little confused i had to go back and be like wait what exactly made her think that they were playing her and i guess that's it i'm like all right okay that just felt a little, I don't know, anticlimactic, I guess. <laughs> anyway, so that was a little confusing, but all right. So now she's kind of upset with them. That's where we're at. She says in the next chapter, 
that something must have happened for them to do something so brutal. Maybe something did happen. Maybe all along they weren't using her, but because of this event that happened where it was so urgent to get Cecilia out of there, maybe they're trying to push her away because they don't want her to get hurt and whatever it is they're doing, whatever that's going on. <laughs> so that could be it because it seems so weird. It seems like this whole time they've been genuinely caring for her. They've confided in her. They have extended their trust to her. I think there's something going on. I think maybe they did push her away for a reason. That's my thinking. I, and that looks like to be what she's thinking as well. Y'all, so I just read chapter 41 and we just got a bunch of information and I feel like things are starting to really come together now on what exactly is happening. So, Cecilia is at work and Sean calls her and pulls her aside and he just lays it on her. Almost everything that they've been hiding. So it turns out, you know, I was a little bit right. They are revolting against something. It's not the government. It's against Cecilia's dad, which makes a lot of sense. So Cecilia's dad, he does own these companies, but he's pretty much the, what would you say? The like monopolizer of the town. He takes from a lot of people and like I think their businesses and all that so he screwed a lot of people over and Sean and his guys are trying to get justice for that and trying to bring him down he actually this is horrible so Dominic's parents died in an accident that's all he's given on the reason he's they have died so it looks like what I take from this that it's her dad's fault that his parents died. So Sean explains to her that his parents came to the town, he says, to work in his plant. They were French immigrants and his mother and her husband came to America to escape her ex-husband back in France. So they came to work at the plant. But he says instead they were exploited by this company and its owner because of their social disadvantage and eventually perished in a fire no one is sure was accidental. So he's alluding that Cecilia's dad may be the reason why that fire started. Like he was trying to get rid of them. <laughs> that is insane. Oh my gosh. So much is coming together. And the reason that Sean and Dominic betrayed Cecilia that way is because they were trying to act like they were not in love with her because she's becoming a target because she is Roman, her father's daughter. And so they don't want the other guys that's a part of this group to come after her. So they're trying to distance themselves. And Sean admits that initially they were using her. He got closer to her so that he could get closer to her dad so that they could take him down. So they were using her in that way, but obviously Sean grew genuine feelings for her and so did Dominic. So now they really do love her, but Sean is pushing her away because he does not want to get her in danger, which makes sense because she's in a lot of danger right now. Because she's involved with this group, they're going to come after her now that maybe most of them do know that she is Roman's daughter. She's in a, gonna get into a lot of trouble. So it's good that they are pushing her away, but obviously that causes conflict because Sean and Dominic are in love with her and she's still in love with them. So that's going to cause some heartbreak. Wow, this is crazy. I mean, some stuff is still confusing. I can still tell they're hiding some things, but this gives us a little bit um, of information that we've been needing. So this was interesting. It's like we went through a whole entire book just to get to this point, but it's pretty good. <laughs> so I have one, I think I have one more chapter and then I'll come back and give you my overall thoughts. That's all I have left. So I'm just going to read through this really quick. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> this is so crazy. That was a crazy last chapter. I mean, it's not like a lot happened. It was mostly just Cecilia. She was 
in her backyard waiting to see if the guys were going to show up. She's trying to like draw them in because she decided she wants to be a part of their whole thing. Wants to work with them, I guess. So I guess, I guess in this book, like songs are a way to communicate messages. That's how Cecilia takes it because she got offended when Afternoon Delight and that song Cecilia played. And she got offended when a certain song played when she was in a car ride with Sean that the song was about a hookup and he thought he was alluding that he thought she was a hookup. Like she reads in two songs a lot so she was doing it here. Um, I don't know what this song is about. I've never heard of the song that she's blasting. But she's using it to draw them in. Because apparently their meetup spot is near their backyard. Like there's this meetup spot that they have that she figured out and it's close to her house so that's kind of creepy so i think she was wondering if they're over there that's what i'm taking from this that they have a meeting spot by her house i think that's what she's saying which is a little creepy but it looks like instead of the guy showing up some other guy shows up that's what i'm taking she doesn't say who this person is but she just says to him you're the frenchman what does that mean I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Once I thought I had everything figured out, I'm left confused again. I don't know what to think. What does that mean? Who is this guy? I'm concerned. I'm sure we won't find out until the next book, which I'm going to read because I'm into this. I want to know more of the secrets that are being hidden and more of what's going on here it's this book is crazy i knew going into this that this book was wild that it was confusing i agree i mean everything everyone says about it is pretty true also in this chapter cecilia starts to look up the meaning behind ravens because of the fact that all the members of this group have raven tattoos um, she's looking into the meaning behind ravens because she's thinking, hey, maybe that can pertain to them. So she figures out a group of ravens is called a conspiracy. <laughs> the irony of that, not at all lost on me. <laughs> that is irony. Like, you can tell they're acting upon conspiracies that have happened with Cecilia's father. So that alone makes a lot of sense. And it says the birds band together in adolescence to form a bond as rebellious teenagers, which I'm sure is when the Raven Hood was formed. That's what she calls the group, the Raven Hood, until they finally made out. And the theory on ravens is that they mate for life. And it also says ravens are also some of the most intelligent birds, which isn't surprising. Every move they've made regarding me was calculated, argued over. I'm sure that more than one of Dominic and Sean's early garage bites were about me. I suspected much, but Sean confirmed it. So we know, like, they're intelligent. <laughs> the fact that they're able to organize this whole revolt, yes, they are. So the raven symbolism, you can see how it comes into play. So that's very interesting. Oh man, this book. I don't even know what to rate it. I, I really, really don't know what to rate it. I have so many jumbled thoughts, so I'll let you know my rating during my November wrap-up because right now I'm just clueless. I don't know what to think about this. I do have mixed feelings. It kind of sucks to be left this confused without some answers, even though we got a little bit of an idea of what's actually going on. I'm still just confused, and that's making it hard to figure out what to think of this book. So. I'm going to have to dwell on my thoughts on this one and I'll let you know my rating for it during my November wrap up once I figure it out. But this was good. It was different and I'm definitely interested in continuing on with this series. I'm actually debating if I want to actually buy the books because the covers are so pretty. The covers are gorgeous and because I'm interested enough in this series to continue, I might just buy the whole series because why not? And I love reading on physical books, so I might do that. I think this series might be worth the extra purchase. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I don't know if I'll do any more vlogs on reading individual books. If that's something you're interested in seeing, let me know. Sometimes when I do vlogs, I start to worry that I'm not being, I don't know, entertaining enough. Like, I feel like sometimes what I have to say isn't that interesting. So this was pretty much a test, so let me know if you guys 
liked how this vlog turned out and I'll definitely consider doing more vlogs on individual books because this was a lot of fun and I wouldn't mind doing it again. But I just want to make sure that there are others who are interested in seeing it. So I guess that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more anime related videos and book related videos. Maybe more vlogs on the last two books in this series. That might happen if this video does well. So look out for that possibly if you're interested in seeing that. And I'll be back with my next video really soon. Bye.